the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Coming up on Sports Center, the Gators try to swim against the tide while the Spartans look to catch Wisconsin napping. They were flying high at the Hoosier Dome and looking good in Cleveland. They were looking for more elbow room in Philly while the kid had a crash landing in California. Hey, don't wave us off. Don't let things slide. Hey, enough levity now. This is serious business. Sports Center is next. Hello and welcome to the show. You can set down the remote. You found a winner. He's Tom. I'm Craig. We got up pretty early this morning. We've been scanning the monitors all day long to bring you the total picture. And there's a lot going on. It's that overlap season. The infamous overlap season, Craig. The college football season draws to the close. Big matchups in college hoop. A meeting of division leaders on the ice. But let's start at the beginning, which is the end of the college football regular season slate. College football's regular season came to a close Saturday afternoon with a second annual SEC title game between the Florida Gators and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Auburn had to be sitting at home wondering what might have been had their program not been flagged by the NCAA. Tennessee had to be cursing the darkness for a loss to Florida. No matter who would go to the Sugar Bowl anyway, let's go to Legion Field and find out. Tenseness on the sidelines, Gene Stallings and the usually unflappable Steve Spurrier. The Tide, all everything, David Palmer doing his thing. First quarter, no score. Bama QB, Brian Bergdorf back to Palmer, who says, here, Brian, you take it back. And the Tide is rolling. Palmer ran for 90 yard, for 93 yards, passed for 90. Same drive, Bergdorf finding Palmer again. David Palmer slithering closer to the Gator end zone. Finally, the Tide would push through for the one. Grant Lynch bowls his way in for the score, 7-0 Alabama. But Terry Dean would bring the Gators back. Down seven zip. Dean, who did not start last week against Florida State, makes the great pump fake here. Look at this fake. Uh oh. And the guy bites. The defensive back is toast. Harrison Houston is there. We're tied at seven. Late in the third quarter, Gators holding on to a one point lead. Shane Edge back to punt. No! This is a fake punt. And what a fake it is. Draws everybody up, and Edge has the edge for the first down. Next play, Terry Dean says, look, we got him on a, on a big trick play. Let's go for the jugular. He gets it. Jack Jackson. Oh, Elizabeth, this is the big one, honey. I'm going to celebrate in the end zone. My goodness. The Gators go on to win 28 to 13. They're going to Bourbon Street. Look out. New Orleans will never be the same. Florida will likely face West Virginia in the Sugar Bowl, but remember, officials of the Bowl Coalition have to meet on Sunday to make everything official. Meanwhile, in Tokyo, Wisconsin going for the Roses. Half a world away against Michigan State. First quarter three zip badgers, but Jim Miller up top to Mill. Holman, look at this catch. 7-3 Michigan State, and they love it in Columbus, Ohio. Second quarter, 10-7 Wisconsin, and Barry Alvarez's team would begin to take control. Alvarez takes control of the headsets. Terrell Fletcher through the hole, and he is gone. 41 yards, his second touchdown of the day or night or whatever time it was in Tokyo, 24-7. Michigan State is angry. That's right, I said they're angry. They're happy. Uh, Michigan State is angry. Demetrius Martin, the hit on Lee DeRamus. Martin still is fired up. DeRamus gets revenge. Wisconsin up by 10. Darrell Bevel, the beta DeRamus. Wisconsin up 34 to 17. That was early in the fourth. And Wisconsin goes on to roll over Michigan State 41 to 20. So your matchup in the Rose Bowl will be Wisconsin and UCLA. Now you see there that UCLA has the upper hand here. If you go on past performance, 7-1 all time against the Badgers, 5-0 in the Rose Bowl for UCLA since 66. The Badgers 1-5 all time in bowl games. But you know, that was all a long time ago. 31 years between Rose Bowls for Wisconsin. This might be a different story. To college hoops, two schools synonymous with basketball and their high-profile coaches met Saturday in the Hoosier Dome. It was number one Kentucky visiting number 21 Indiana. The game featured Rick Pitino's full-court pressure against Bobby Knight's in-your-chest defense. And there they are. Bobby talking, Rick listening. IU in control. Pat Knight feeds Damon Bailey with the left. He had 23 points in the first half, 29 for the game. Kentucky comes running back. Jared Pickett with a steal. Roderick Rhodes for the lay-in. Kentucky leads 26-17. Then, Knight choosing his words carefully, encouraging words to Henderson, and it worked. Minutes later, the rebound and the putback. Hoosiers up 11 at the half. Kentucky turns to the three for a comeback. Travis Ford from the arc. He had 20 in the game, but Indiana wouldn't crack. Pat Graham feeds Henderson for the dunk. Hoosiers up 77-68, and then it's Henderson again. The rebound and putback. He finished with 17 points, 11 boards. The Hoosiers upset number one Kentucky, 96-84. Bobby Knight said afterwards, this is the best I've ever seen Damon Bailey play. Rick Pitino said his Kentucky team is good, but I don't think there is any greatness yet. 
Northwestern State versus number two Arkansas. First half, State's Kenny McMillan for three. Northwestern State had a nine-point lead. Still in the first half, then it's the Alex Dillard show. He caught fire for three. Another three, then the steal and the flip. Dillard on a roll, pulls up and drains another three. Arkansas rolls 111-76 in a three-minute and 57-second span. Dillard scored 16 of the Razorbacks' 19 points. He finished with 21. Kansas DePaul, first half, all DePaul. Blue Demons, Brandon Cole puts in the circus hoop. DePaul up 10 at the half. A few young players, remember, there's a second half you've got to play. Don't get too excited. The Jayhawks knew that. Richard Scott, the hoop, the harm. Kansas led by five late in the game. DePaul with the steal and the chance to cut it to three. With Patrick Ritchie. Swats, Tom Slidesmith, and the Jayhawks hold on to win. 79-74. KU improves to 5-1. and one. Steve Woodbury sparked a 29-9 second half run. He scored 21 points of his 23 in the second half. And we move now, BYU, North Carolina. Big night for Eric Montross, an assortment of shots. The power move off the window. The turnaround, Jay, and he's got a left hand in the second half. 17 points, nine boards, MVP of the Tournament of Champions, Dennis Stackhouse. The freshman, 13 points, the jam. Dean Smith gets another W. Tar Heels win 97-65. Rasheed Wallace scores 11 with 10 boards as the sixth-ranked Heels win the Tournament of Champions in Charlotte. Now turning to the NBA, the education of Sean Bradley continued Saturday night in Philadelphia Spectrum as the Sixers hosted David Robinson and the San Antonio Spurs. And Freddie Carter knew it was going to be a long night with uh, the Admiral in town. David Robinson breezing by Bradley here for an easy two. Then the scoop down the lane by the Admiral. Here it comes, loose ball. Get out of my way. He had 37 points in the night. Finally, he catches Sean Bradley with the elbow to the nose. Welcome, rookie, to the NBA. Bradley's got conditioning problems and some other problems, stamina problems, they say in Philly. Oh, Chris Webber, wouldn't he look nice in a six uniform? Anyway, uh, San Antonio wins it 90-82. to 82. Robinson had seven block shots in that game as well. Sean Bradley on the night shot, one for eight, two points. Spurs win their eighth straight. Their franchise record is 10. In Seattle, the Sonics of Minnesota Timberwolves. Christian Leitner says, oh, they're going to give me a lane. I think I'll drive and score. But the Sonics came back as Gary Payton. Watch the ball movement here. Payton to Kendall Gill. Now give it up, Kendall. There it is, Gary Payton for the easy layup. Then Detlef Schramm to Gill, who takes it strong to the hole, doing his Sean Kemp invitation. And you get the idea. Kendall Gill and the Sonics win it 99-82. to Seattle has won 11 in a row against Minnesota. The T-Wolves really blew it open for, the, for Seattle in the third quarter. The Wolves were awful. Shot 3 for 14 and had 8 turnovers. In L.A., the crosstown battle of the Lakers and Clippers. And the battle of L.A. turns into a show for Doug Christie from three-point land. It is good. Another bomb. It is good. Then he fakes the three and runs by Danny Manning and flips in the runner. Christie finished with a career-high 33. The bad news for the Clippers, beside the fact they lost, Stanley Roberts here, ruptured right Achilles tendon, surgery set for Monday. He is out for the season, and the L.A. Clippers lose a lot more than a game. 109 to 102, that thing was at the L.A. Sports Arena. Tough break for Stanley Roberts and the Clippers. Yeah, that it was. There are trophies, and then there's the Commander-in-Chief trophy. Mm. They've been battling for it over the years. It's Army-Navy when we come back. And in hockey, the Leafs were falling in Toronto. The NHL story when the Sports Center continues in just a moment. It was a great game north of the border. And south of the border, in the NBA, Penny was right on the money for the Orlando Magic. Hey, here's your ding ding, big fella. Huh? Mm. Yeah. Here's Daddy's ding ding. Once you get a look at those two all beef patties. No, this is Daddy's. That special sauce, lettuce, cheese, piled fresh and hot on that sesame seed bun. You've got to have a Big Mac. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. A small touch, a certain look. It's the little things that are worth the most. Which is why every Delta faucet gives you more than you'd ever expect for the money. Giving you the money for those things you can't even put a value on. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Football. 
real football. And real grass. Lambeau Field in snow. Yeah. Yeah. Too obvious. What about the fearsome force of purple people here? Carl Ellis. No name defense. The Oakland Raiders. Baltimore Colts. Hey, Mike Curtis. Ray Nitschke. <laughs> Willie Lanier. Immaculate reception. Franco's Italian. Oh, a real fullback. Franco Harris, Marv Hubbard, take your pick. No, no. The snake to Clarence Davis, 26 seconds left. AFC semifinals versus Miami. Beachwood Age Boy Watson. Chris Clean Classic. Sports Center is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. Welcome back. The tradition continues. Army versus Navy. Lots of memories over the years. Navy's little Joe Bellini. Army's Blanchard and Davis, Mr. Inside and Outside. And, of course, the Dodger, Roger Staubach. Saturday's game was the 94th meeting. This one from the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Who would take right the Commander-in-Chief trophy? In the Navy remembers their fall next teammate, Alton Grizzard. First quarter, no score. Navy tries a field goal, but long snapper Brad Silver misses the holder by a mile. Army led 9-0 at the half. Third quarter, Army QB Rick Roper sneaks in from nine yards out. Army up 16-0. Fourth quarter, Navy comes back. Fourth and goal from the four, Jim Kubia with a bootleg in for the score. Two-point conversion good. Army up 16-8. After Army fumbles the ensuing kickoff, Kubiak finds backup tight end Jim Mill for the score. Lead cut to 2, 16-14. Two-point conversion failed. Navy driving late. And Brad Sramanek fails to get to the middle of the field. So the pressure's on the freshman. The kicker, Ryan Buccianeri, to win it. Army prays for the miss. 18 yards out. The freshman misses. Army hangs on 16-14. Navy coach George Chomp said, you win as a team and you lose as a team. No one individual should have to take responsibility. Army takes the Commander-in-Chief trophy and now leads the all-time series with 44 wins against 43 losses with seven ties. Navy had good and plenty chances inside the Army 32. In the first half, they fumbled on a field goal followed by two more fumbles. In the second half, a loss of downs and then the missed field goal. Tom. All right, the top attraction in the NHL, Craig, on Saturday night, the New York Rangers leaders in the Atlantic Division in Toronto to do battle with the Maple Leafs, the darlings of English-speaking fans and media in Canada. Let's go to the Maple Leaf Gardens and find out what happened. Listen to this. Canadian lady, she forgotten the words. Forgot, oh my goodness, second period, one nothing leaves, that's a ticket in, intercepts and shorthanded, beats the goaltender Felix Potma, his 13th goal of the year for... Uh, Mr. Tikkan, a few minutes later, John Cullen drop past to Wendell Clark. He pots his second of the night, two to one Leafs, and they love it in the press box in Toronto. Tied at three in the third, Mark Messier, fancy stick work. Look at the pass between the defenseman's legs, and hits a breaking Mike Gartner. And they love it in Toronto? No, they don't, because their beloved Maple Leafs were beaten by the Rangers. Four to three, the final. The Rangers are 19, six and four atop the Eastern Conference. Mike Richter, their goalie, 13, 0 and two in his last 15. Can't get much better than that. Montreal and Boston, usually a good matchup, but uh, not on Saturday night, not for Boston. Vincent Damfus to Oleg Petrov. Out goes John Casey, in comes John Blue, and he's got the Blues less than a minute later. John LeClaire behind the net, the wraparound. Johnny, weren't ready for that one, were you? Four zip, Montreal still in the third. Five zip, Paul DiPietro finding Vincent Damfus, who fires a wrister past Blue. Damfus, two goals, two assists. Canadians win in Boston Garden by a rout. The Bruins' eight-game home unbeaten streak is smashed. The Habs scored on their first three shots of the second period. Ouch. In Hartford, the little team that could, maybe, battling big, bad Pittsburgh. And I mean battling. There goes Randy Cunningworth, beating up Marcus Naslin, but he's not done. He wants the whole Pittsburgh bench. Cunningworth used to play for Pittsburgh. Yeah, take that. I didn't like the town anyway. Score six all, late in the third. Garmer Yarger says, I don't have an illegal stick. Referee says you do. But he comes out after the penalty in overtime and gets his revenge. He scores. That's right. Pierre Maguire, the Hartford coach, used to coach in Pittsburgh. He says that Yager uses an illegal stick 90% of the time. He knew it. What he didn't know is that you couldn't question illegal sticks in overtime. And Yager stepped out of the penalty box and won the game and goes, ha, ha, at the end. In New Jersey, the Devils trying to make things hot for the Blackhawks. Referee Paul Stewart says, hi, I'm glad to be back. Yeah. Second period tied at one. Watch this. Bruce Driver about to clear it. Teammate Bill Guerin bumps into him. The loose puck on the stick of Stefan Matteau. Thank you very much. And Chicago leads it 2-1. to one. Later in the period, Yaroslav Modry with a puck. He passes back to Scott Niedermeyer. Rips one pass. Mm, uh, past uh, the uh, Chicago goaltender. And uh, yes, he can believe it. And it was Ed Belfort in the Chicago net. Game tied at 2, and that's where it stayed. The second straight 2-2 two -two tie for the Devils, who meet the Rangers at Madison Square Garden on Sunday night. Craig? Back to pro hoops. Sure, the Warriors aren't healthy, but after a successful road trip, one would think they could handle the Timberwolves at the Oakland Coliseum. They couldn't.
Christian and his headband fouled out both Owens and Weber as the Warriors fall to 2-5 and five at home while the Road Warriors are an impressive 5-2. and two. The Pacers in town Saturday. Larry Brown still with the Pacers. Reggie Miller feeds Rick Smith, who hits the hook. Pacers by 10, but the Warriors storm back. You know why? Because Billy Owens and all that talent. Behind the back once, twice. Billy going to keep it. Oh, fall away and hits. Warriors lead by two at the half. Golden State pulls away in the second. Weber, 26 points. Warriors win 99-92. Weber was 11 for 22 from the floor. Owens scored 18. Reggie Miller led the Pacers with 22. Hornets, Jazz, Allen Bristow on edge after Friday night's loss to the Nuggets. And it was the Jazz early. Jeff Malone, finger roll. Carl Malone muscles in the jam. Look at the guns on the mailman. Jazz up by 24 at the end of one. Alonzo goes strong. He had 36 on the night. Hornets down five. They would get it down to three. Wasn't enough. John Stockton feeds Carl for the J. 122-108 Jazz. Mailman scores 35 with 14 rebounds. The Jazz scored 41 points in the second quarter. Stockton had 17 assists. Larry Johnson scored eight. His third game in single digits after going 89 games in double figures. Magic at the Cavs. The Czar versus one-time assistant Brian Hill. Magic ice cold early. Scott Skiles blows the bunny. Nick Anderson. Straight away, you don't see it. You just see the dish to Penny Hardaway for the slam. Then, late fourth, Cavs down three. Chris Mills from nearby Shaker Heights. Score tied at 83. Next trip up for Orlando, Donald Royal. With the tip in for the lead at 85-83. Magic win at 87-83. Royal scored 16 points. Shaq, 23. Orlando managed just 32 points in the first half. We're down 16 in the third before they came back to get their first win in seven trips to Richfield Coliseum. Stay with us on SportsCenter in a moment. College Hoops, Georgetown, putting it on the line against Villanova with the third time be the charm for the Hoyas. And still to come, more from the NHL, including the Blues and the Dallas Stars in St. Louis. no imitation. Make sure the anti-theft device you buy says the club on the handle. No imitation. Make sure the anti-theft device you buy says the club on the handle. At 7.30 Eastern this Monday, we'll see if the Cowboys can bounce back. A unique look at the receivers. Harper and Irvin will talk about the Cowboy-Eagle rivalry. NFL Prime Monday, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. 